Mr. Uh, President Farage, freedom and democracy, please. Mr. Broso, it's very good to see you here, and a chance to hold the executive to account surely must be welcome. Now, as you know, I've not always been one of your biggest supporters, but I have to concede you've done very well. You've managed to ignore the French referendum result, you've managed to ignore the Dutch referendum result, and you've managed to bully the Irish into submission second time round. So you've almost got your treaty. Uh, and of course now it's time to pick the President, the big global figurehead of the European Union. Now, Tony Blair is the odds-on favourite with the bookmakers, and I just wonder whether you agree with me that his continued support for Britain to join the Euro, that his surrender of £2 billion a year of the British rebate, and his, his, his whole approach towards Britain's membership of the European Union, his refusal to give the British a referendum, does all of this show that he has sufficient pro-European credentials to become the President? Indeed, was this the deal that I predicted back in 2005? Was this agreed all along? Oh, thank you very much. Ms. Answell. First of all, Mr Farage, do not be so sad with the result in Ireland. It was indeed a great, a great result, 67% of people that uh, when there is a real debate with real ownership we have shown that can be strong support for Europe. In fact it was the declaration of independence of Ireland from the United Kingdom Independence Party <laughs> because you were there making campaign and the Irish said no to you as well and to your party. Now, <laughs> regarding uh, the future president of the Council, I am not going to comment. Uh, that is a decision for the European Council. What I want to tell you very frankly is that there is no hidden agreements, there are no hidden agendas. Uh, if there was, I would already know. And so there are not hidden agreements with, uh, and secret uh, um, bargaining. What I can tell you is the following, is that uh, we need a President of the Council that is a committed European, that gives consistency over time, because I don't think it's proper to have a Council that every six months changes completely its agenda. So I'm a very strong supporter of a strong European Council President that gives coherence and consistency to the Council, and that works, of course, hand in hand with the Commission, and it is fully committed to the European project and to the community method. Thank you. Mr. Disappointed, Mr. Broser. I mean, it is question time, and a yes or no would have been easier, but never mind. Whether it is Mr. Blair or not, the fact is he will not be democratically elected. You've not been democratically elected. In fact, doesn't this rather sum up the whole EU? Isn't it a rather wonderful organisation for retired, clapped out ex premiers to have real executive power? You could have democratised the EU with this treaty, you chose not to. Does national democracy matter? Or is the European Union, in your opinion, a greater good? Precisely, precisely because the European Union is not the kind of integrated state that you appear to fear so much, it is that the President of the Council is not directly elected by people, but is uh, chosen by the the democratically elected heads of government of Europe. This is precisely the logic of it. And myself, I was not only supported by the unanimity of the heads of government democratically elected, but also by a strong majority in this parliament. So I think I have a strong democratic, a strong democratic legitimacy. Uh, in my previous life in, as a national politician, I was uh, democratically elected since I was 29 years uh, to my uh, na national parliament, but now I, I want to tell you, it's more difficult to be elected President of the Commission than Prime Minister in most of our countries. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I'm not comfortable with that at all. Who elected these guys to run the planet?